Hi y'all and welcome back to my channel. Apologize for the lighting. Um, we're here. We're doing it now. I'm filming. I'm getting it done. But there is probably going to be a little kind of that kind of action because there's a window right freaking there. But other than that, the lighting is pretty good despite going in and out of exposure. But today we're going to be doing an anti-haul because I don't know when enough is enough. Or I feel like it's more like the companies don't know when enough is enough. Because they being out here, we have made it through 2020, the struggle year. We're out into 2021 and we are trying our darndest, our hardest to pretend that the casualties of 2020 didn't happen so we are in full shill push out shiz mode like some of the stuff that I've seen released I'm just like okay all right this is what we think is a responsible thing to do right now because I have seen ever since the new year and now we're getting into spring I mean we were seeing spring releases and like teasers in like January and I'm like there is like five inches of snow on the ground I don't want to hear a single thing about a spring release and then you've got like fashion houses that are like well we're doing fall now and I'm like y'all need to slow the f down so Needless to say, there's been a lot of eye rolling and a lot of scrolling and I actually had a lot on my last anti-haul. I think it was my last anti-haul where I was like, you know what? My shiz, the way that I film, I'm gonna have some things that aren't relative, that don't have any hype, that aren't new, that aren't, you know, not relative, relevant. That's the word I was going for. But I was like, I don't even care. I'm gonna talk about what I'm gonna talk about. And if someone wants to go down and write a comment and be all like, well, why didn't you talk about this when it came out and it's outdated and you're I'm just gonna let them have their moment and move on and create content the way I would like to. So we're doing an anti-haul and it's gonna be fun and all kinds of amazingness. So let's come in and talk about these wonderful things. All right, figure we'll start off with the stuff that I didn't get to last anti-haul and we'll go right to the top of the list, which is the Too Faced Teddy Bear Collection. Now, before I go on into this and I tear this poor, absolutely cuddly thing a new one, there was a brief moment where I saw that and I was like, I think that's the most interesting thing Too Faced has done in the past year and a half. I think I could remind, I don't know if I could tell you the last Too Faced palette I bought. I've decluttered all but one of them. And this one actually looked well executed. Y'all know a large part of my issue with Too Faced is the fact that they tend to just kind of push it, shill it. You know, we don't give a lot of thought to theme. We just kind of fuddle a bunch of colors together and say, look, it's an aesthetic. When in fact, it is very much not an aesthetic. It's a disappointment. But looking at this with like, you know, it's kind of cute. It's like Teddy Bear. You know, I'm like, all right, that's their aesthetic. That's their vibe. It's got really cute packaging. The shades and the eyeshadow palette, relatively unoffensive. You know, it's not something that's like so boring. You're not going to remember it. But in that same vein, it's not exciting enough for me to pay $49, $54, whatever this shiz is going to cost. And the highlighter, y'all know how I am. We've come a long way this year. I'm not going to get sucked into a really cute packaging Too Faced Tyler because I know that highlighter is not going to exceed my expectations. Probably just going to disappoint me and make me all kinds of sad. But we have come a long way. There was a moment. See, this is when I know a company just isn't on my radar anymore. When I look at something like this and I'm like, oh, yes, that's beautiful. That's amazing. That's fantastic. Because it's the most interesting thing that they've done in a really long time. You know, I'm not actually interested in it for myself. I just have this moment of, oh, wow, that's actually good. Because it's kind of me like thinking about the brand. I'm like, oh, I wish they could do better. I wish they could whatever. You know, when it's a little bit more than the bare minimum, that's what makes it exciting. Not the fact that it's actually an interested and exciting product that's going to bring any kind of depth or any kind of newness or quality to the eyeshadow palettes that I already have in my collection. So I looked at that and I was like, oh, it's cute. It's well executed. I know a fair amount of people are going to get it and they're probably going to like it. But for me and all my whatevers, I'm like, okay, all right, we're past the bare minimum. Hopefully that makes it better for 2021. But I don't need bare minimum in my makeup collection. Okay, 
Let's talk about this palette here. Urban Decay, a brand that I used to absolutely love, and another brand whose palettes I decluttered the majority of out of my collection after coming to the realization that their formulas are not an end-all be-all for me. They're not even like... Uh, I just don't buy them. And they decided to do, I'm not even sure what this, I have it written down, Southwest palette. It's that like kind of interesting, sort of thought out, you know, Western themed palette. And now I feel like part of the issue here, I will leave Abby Williams' uh, anti-haul down where she talked about this because she said a lot of really good points. She was so, she was like, oh, it could have been so much. But of course, because it's from a mainstream old favorite, you know, brand, it's going to be the bare minimum again. Although this is I like it's leaning. That's what makes it disappointing. And that's what makes me anti-haul it is it could have been something really interesting. It could have been a really nifty collection, but instead Urban Decay decided to take their naked theme and smash it together with a Western theme. I mean, they could have done so much with this. I mean, the color story is basically kind of a green, kind of a blue, kind of mishmash together with leftover naked heat eyeshadows. That's what I see. Maybe that's not what you see. Like it is like, it is like, this is the thing. This is the thing. It is just a peak of interest. Just a little bit of intrigue. Just a little bit of something. Something in those like darker, more, you know, the, the earthy tones with, with the, with the navy blue and like the dark green, you know, there's just a little bit of interest, but then it's, it's not enough. It's the start of something that could be really, really good and innovative and interesting, but then the rest of the palette is just leftover eyeshadow. Like, I agree with Abby so much that they could have gone balls to the wall with this collection. Like, they, I remember I owned their eyeshadow, like Space Cowboy and all kinds of, like, they could have gone ham. They could have been like, we are going to take this cowboy theme, we are going to camp it up and we're going to jack that shiz to Jesus. But like I keep saying, with the majority of mainstream companies, we're just going to the Southwestern naked. I mean, like it doesn't even make any point any now because the naked palettes were takes on different neutral tones. The Naked 1 was like rich, decadent browns. The Naked 2 was taupe. The Naked 3 was rose gold. Then we did smoky, and then we just kind of really got off the rails after that. You know, they're just sitting here being like, we've got the Naked theme. We need to do, if they had just, just taken the Western inspiration and made a palette in and of itself outside of the whole Naked sphere, you know, I feel like I could get behind this a little bit more, but they're like naked uh, with cowboys, which I know to a lot of people, that's going to sound like a really good time. But for an eyeshadow palette, that shit just ain't cutting it for me. I'm like, ah, like the, it could have been so nice. Like I said, it could have been this crazy psychedelic steampunk, cyberpunk, cowboy eyeshadow collection. But I feel like at times we are asking too much from these companies. I just, it was just, you saw it. And I just, it was just one big giant eye roll. I'm like, this is where we're at. This main amazing company that used to be cutting edge, that used to be making trends and everything. And now we're just doing a, a, a naked Midwest theme because we can. All right, if we're going to sit here and I'm going to trash Urban Decay, we might as well take it all the way. And oh, they decided to, you know, throw back to 2003 and they released more eyeshadow singles. I'm like, that's a throwback. That's a really big throwback and not in a good way. And I say this not because the colors are lame, not because the aesthetic is weird or because the formula is bad. No, 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 no. Formula could be absolutely fan-tucking-fastic, although even if it is fan-tucking-fastic, that is not enough to make me pay $22 for a single eyeshadow. That's just not happening. And so we've got Urban Decay over here clinging desperately to the olden times. They're like, all right, we know how to do naked palettes, so let's try to take that and do something. We know how to do singles, but we've got to revamp. 
We've got to revamp that situation. And it's just, it's not enough. I'm not saying when you look at today's market, at today's oversaturation, as I, I should just have a t-shirt. That's for merch. I should just have a t-shirt that says oversaturation. But in today's makeup climate, releasing expensive single shadows when there are so, so many options for affordable single shadows. There are affordable options to get you really good quality eyeshadow palettes for 22 and under. Like, I feel like a lot of us are not out here looking to spend $22 on a single eyeshadow. In today's climate, in the aftermath of 2020, we're being a bit more conscious, I feel, about what we purchase. And so I know for me, I am not about looking to spend that much money on a single. No, 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 no. I have kicked the single eyeshadow train. Well, Single eyeshadow train, especially in like compacts like that, if I can't get it in a little sleeve and automatically pop it into a magnetic pan, I don't want it. I think I've decluttered 99.999% of my single eyeshadows, my KVD ones, my Urban Decay ones, like all of that shiz. Because I wasn't reaching for them. Yeah, maybe I should have popped them out. I mean, even with the Urban Decay ones, I popped them out and put them in a palette and they just, they just, they just weren't that amazing. Urban Decay is just caught in this weird struggle bubble about what they need to do to stay relevant. And while trying to grasp the 21st century of makeup, they're like, mm, just one giant, constant, inconsistent throwback. Now I'm not bashing single eyeshadows. I'm just saying that price point wise and compared to other things that you can get, I don't think single eyeshadows are anywhere near as viable as they used to be in this sort of componentry. When you go and can go to a multitude of different indie companies, you've got Give Me Glow, you got ColourPop for Pete's sakes, the Lethal Cosmetics, Clonida. There are so many amazing indie makeup companies that take that single eyeshadow game and do it better than the majority of mainstream makeup companies selling us little single eyeshadows and little, little componentry. It's excessive and it's not interesting anymore, at least to me. Okay, let's talk about something that I have significant issues with. I hope y'all are buckled in because this is going to be one heck of a ride. Sephora Collection, a brand that I have no Notoriously, notoriously crapped on. Sephora's all like, we're an affordable brand, except when we collaborate with people and then we might as well be Natasha Denona. And Sephora decided that they were going to collaborate, make a collection with Coach. I'm gonna kill myself now. I mean, at least it's not ColourPop and Coach. I feel like that would be a little bit like, we're an affordable brand. This is a bougie, bougie luxury company. I just, I don't understand. And if we're, we're going to talk about this, you know, all of that aside, the fact that it's a handbag company collaborating with a makeup company, there's just, nah. you know, I would be so much more inclined if Sephora were like, all right, we're going to give you the Guillermo del Toro collection. I'd be like, yeah. So I understand. I am obviously not the demographic for this shiz, but when you have eyeshadow palettes that are marketed as eyeshadow palettes, but they're also marketed as cute little coach keychains. I'm I'm not even sorry. I was about to be like, I'm so I'm not even sorry. Who of y'all were sitting here thinking, you know what I don't have? You know what I need? I need an eyeshadow palette that I can put on a keychain that I can clip onto my bag so I can haul it around with me and break the eyeshadows. Powders, they be a very delicate thing and I don't think that putting them in a cute little kitschy, catchy, uh, keychain is necessarily, um, the best structural environment for them to live their best lives. I was, I'm um, just like, that's it, that's it. Sephora is collaborating with Coach. That is the 2021 we're living in. And I mean, and it's just, I mean, okay, this is the real tea here. In my opinion, obviously, this collection is not about makeup. This collection is so far from makeup. The selling point of this is for people who are fans of Coach, who also incidentally happen to be fans of makeup, see this and they're like, ah, oh, 
Yes. Now I can take my obsession with this brand a little bit higher. Also has a selling point to people who like Coach, who don't have the moolah to spend, you know, five, eight hundred dollars on a bag, or two, three hundred dollars on a wallet, or a hundred and fifty on one of their cute little kitschy, catchy key fob things. I know, because I've seen them advertised on Facebook, and I'm like, that is a cute little dinosaur keychain. And then I click the link, and it's like, I'm $85, and I nope the shiz out of that. I just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm really struggling to find the connection here, aside from we're using makeup as a means to make Coach more money. As much as I love creative collaborations, as, I, as much as I love seeing things I love put into something else that I love, I also have issues when there are companies that have absolutely no business, no business whatsoever in the makeup industry coming along and dipping their little toes into the makeup whatever by making subpar makeup which is actually marketing their products in order to make a profit on people who can't afford regular coach products and people who like makeup and eyeshadows aren't even that exciting i have pretty much all faith in the fact that this quality isn't going to be the best thing not saying it's going to be trash but i find it funny that sephora keeps doing this thing where they're really they're like we're the affordable brand at sephora we've got great products you know 10 and under and then they do these collaborations with these super fancy, you know, like the Moschino and, you know, this and like they're, they're then they're like, we're going to charge. We're suddenly this affordable brand is suddenly going to be a uh, high end makeup prices. I don't understand it. I understand that businesses are all about making money and nothing that I say about anything. It's just like I'm sitting here and I'm like spinning my wheels and it's like, yeah. I know. Everything a corporation does is to make money. You know, there is no, they don't care about you. They don't care about me. There is no reason behind it other than let's make some money. I just saw this and I was just like, why? Why are we making eyeshadow palettes into keychains? Why? I mean, I feel like that's something Makeup Revolution would do because they had like, and Too Faced did once where it was like, it's a cell phone cover with makeup in it. I understand, like, the need for versatile and travel makeup, but I feel like you're making it more complicated than it needs to be. I just, I just, it's not that I don't like Coach. There have been some things by Coach that I've been like, I kind of need that. They've done some collaborations that are absolutely gorgeous, but this is one collaboration that I, I, I don't get. I see it and, it and it makes me want to throw down and just leave the community. I'm just like, this is it. This is where we're at. Keychain eyeshadow palettes. All right, guys, it's been fun. I'm out. It just, it is unfathomable to me. Like I said, I keep saying, maybe it's because I'm old. Maybe it's because I'm really practical. I'm like, all right, give me my eyeshadow palette in a thing. I don't want it hanging on my bag. I don't want it pitching around in my, per I just, no. No, 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 no. I understand it's a certain demographic. I understand it's about being collectible. It's about being with a designer brand. I mean, it's kind of like when you got H&M going around and they're like, well, we're going with Versace and the, 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 the vampire's wife. I missed that collection. And they're then going to be taking this and they're going to be like, we're going to be charging two, three hundred dollars. And I understand that is affordable when you compare it to the designer's normal prices, but that being said, it still isn't affordable. It's like, yeah, it's a fraction of the cost of what, you know, I would pay for like an $8,000 dress, but that doesn't mean I still have $300 to buy a dress. I don't. This is a whole can of worms that I could just, I was just like, Sephora, X, uh, coach. All right, I guess, I guess that's happening. That's what we're doing now. Okay, now if we're going to talk about like expensive makeup that I'm not going to buy, Natasha Denona. I always say this every time, blushes. Face palettes, $65 palettes, highlighters, I'm down. But then when she releases this like, this, this, I don't even know what the flip this thing is called. I know a lot of people are calling it like the clown palette because it's just this disjointed mishmash of bright, colorful eyeshadow. See, this is the thing. This is the thing that irks me. When it comes to being a color lover, at least for myself, I can't speak for everyone. When it comes to me purchasing colorful eyeshadow, I 
like a theme. I like there to be a layout that makes sense. I like there to be gradation. I mean, if we're gonna go blue, if we're gonna go green, if we're gonna go purple, I enjoy having something that flows. Rather than taking a bright purple, a yellow, an orange, you know, the majority of it shimmers, a couple of weird random mattes and just put it into a palette and say, look, it's bright, it's colorful, it's got crazy colors in it. This is what color lovers want. They love color. We do love color, but for me and my house, I like color that tells a story. I like color that doesn't look like an absolute nightmare. A color story that she's probably gonna charge $129 for and have it be this just, I just, I hate it when it comes to bright color any brand that's just like, oh, well, I just put every color in the rainbow in here and it's so creative and it's amazing and it's rainbow and it's colorful and that automatically makes it a good colorful palette just because like whenever they say colorful, whenever like these brands take and go into weird colors, I feel like the, it, it feels like the license they're taking is like, all right, we have these colors. It gives them the excuse and the license to just vomit whatever colorful eyeshadows they want into a palette and because it's colorful eyeshadows, well, it doesn't matter if it's disjointed. Color is expressive. Color is alternative. Color doesn't need to have a consistent color theory, which it does. It needs to have a consistent color theory because I'm not gonna buy $129 not just to know a colorful eyeshadow palette that I then need to use another palette to supplement that shiz. I'm not about that. Did that once last year and I'm not gonna do it again. And then, I mean, I mean, aside from the fact that there looks like there's maybe three mattes in this whole ding dang thing, the way I do my makeup, I am not about just like taking a shimmer and just you know, I don't have the eyelids for that shiz no more. But it's just, it's like, oh, well, I'm Natasha Denona. I'm pretentious. I'm bougie. Look at my modern interpretation of color. I'm like, sweetie, sweetie, you are not Stephen Pollock all up in here. Matthew Pollock. I passed Art History 1 and 2. Really, I did. But it's just this sort of, like, free liberty to be just allowed to do whatever the flip they want. It was like KVD with her like, tell me this shiz does not look like an old Kat Von D holiday palette she would release. Look at all these crazy colors because I'm alternative and edgy. And we're over here all going, oh yes, oh my goodness, look at her brain must be so complex, must be on such another level to see color in this format, in this array. And I'm like, no, it isn't enlightenment. It's probably intoxication. Because one thing like I can understand, if you were BH Cosmetics or you whatever, you're like, Bleh! look, rainbow palette. I'd be like, okay, all right, it's $12. But then you take a super expensive one and it's like, look, I'm a hundred. No, 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 no. With high prices <laughs> comes great responsibility. And this is some nonsense. I'm not up in here at <laughs> all. This just like, I mean, I thought like the, the, the ABH Norvina palettes, like, you know, you look at those and you're like, yeah, that's a lot of color. It's a lot of different color, but they at least have relatively cohesive themes. You're like, okay, all right, this is the purple one. This is the blue green one. This is the orange green one. This is the pink neutral one, you know? Whereas with this Natasha Denona one, it's like, this is just a whole freaking bunch of nonsense. It's just a bunch of eyeshadows we had and we put it in a palette and we slap her name on it. And we charge $129 for it. And people are going to be, this is one thing that I hate. This was the same thing that happened with a uh, KKW release where she did like a little bit of color and people were like, oh, look at the color. Look at it! Indie makeup companies are so good at creating color. And it frustrates me when you have a mainstream company that does a subpar or a not well thought out colorful palette, but people lose their ever loving minds because it's a mainstream brand doing color. I remember when Anastasia came out with the uh, Alyssa Edwards and people were like, oh, ABH is doing color. Look how beautiful this palette is. It's amazing. It's colorful. When better color stories have been and are being curated by lesser known brands. Just because you are a high end brand does not mean you have the corner marketed on every single eyeshadow color theory, especially bright colors. Y'all stick to neutrals and stay in your lane. Because if you're gonna do 
colorful eyeshadows, do it right. Don't do colorful eyeshadows and like market them and do them in the same way you would do neutrals. I just, like I said, the way people just, they're like, oh, it's color from Natasha Denona. It's revolutionary. No, it's not. It's a bunch of ah shadow vomit put into a palette by a bougie pretentious brand that thinks they can get away with creating a subpar chaotic color theory and call it artistic and inventive. I'm just, I mean, I know that's definitely an age one. I'm like, I'm done. I'm out. Peace. I know Smoky Glow has talked about it. I think everybody I follow has looked at this and been like, oh, Okay. It's like when someone, this could sound so horrible, but I don't even care anymore. It's like when someone comes up to you and they're like, look at my baby. It's so cute. And you're sitting there looking at that child just like, yes, Karen. Yes, that's a, that's a beautiful, beautiful baby. You know? And in reality, you're like, oh, I feel real sorry for that kid's genetic jackpot. I just cannot with this. I cannot. I'm so done. Anti-consumerism Soraya is going to erupt all over 2021. We're going to buy what I like because I love makeup. Makeup is an amazing artistic expression for me. It's part of who I am as a person. But I've also learned that my makeup loving heart does not have time for absolute nonsense like this shiz. Okay. Let's just breeze through a couple more of these because obviously I've done, um, we've, we've done monologue a fair amount. So maybe we'll get just some little interludes now. Uh, hip dot plus peeps. Uh, yeah, that is definitely the makeup collaboration I needed. I need an eyeshadow palette inspired by Marshmallow Confections. I mean, again, what Hip Dot does, I don't know if I will ever purchase anything from this company because what they do is they zero in on something definitely not makeup related. They're like, this is a thing. People love this. People die hard for this. This is a cult following. Everybody loves peeps. And then they take that and they translate it into makeup so that they can take that thing that already makes a lot of revenue by itself and so that we can have another way to shill it, another way to sell it, another level of that ever so intricate layering of excessive marketing. You all know I love, uh, you know, collecting things and stuff like that and all that, but there comes a point. I mean, when you're, when, when your inspiration is a Easter themed marshmallow treat, I think we're reaching a, at least the bottom of this barrel. Maybe the next barrel has some, some better options, but th the bottom of this one, it's, it's, it's ugly. You know, and it's not that I despise peeps. I don't look at this and think, ah, oh, peeps are the worst thing ever. Why are they? No, it's just the asinineness of them just taking, grasping at straws at the ever little just thing that they're going to do. You know, like today it's peeps and tomorrow it's going to be Kentucky Fried Chicken. I mean, that wouldn't surprise me either. I mean, at this point in the makeup game, we're just taking things and doing all. It's just, it is just a world full of chaos and nonsense. We're doing food themed things. We're doing just, it's just, it is a big giant headache. And I wouldn't feel so bad if it were somewhat well executed. And I'm not, I am not the end all be all beholder of uh, peep themed makeup. But when you look at this and you go beyond the, oh look, he's a peep themed makeup with peep still eyeshadows. If you look past that, it's a little thing with peep branding on it with some pasty pasty stad pathetic uh, pastel eyeshadows. It's just taking that thing, that marketing thing that they can market. Take a shot every time I say market or marketing. Please don't. I don't, I don't want that on my conscience. But it's literally taking this beautiful marketing thing that they've got and they're like, what is the smallest amount of effort we can do to make this makeup? And so they throw some pastel eyeshadows in there and be like, look, it's amazing. I mean, it looks like something you would get at like Claire's or you would find at Walmart during Easter. You're like, oh, look, it's a little Peeps eyeshadow collection makeup thing that I can give to my six-year-old niece. Doesn't scream any kind of quality. Doesn't scream something that is worth 
what they're charging for it. And I know they're not ex exponentially expensive, but quite frankly, this looks like Claire's makeup that I would pay like $8 for. And I'm not paying $8 for Claire's makeup. Ooh, let's talk about something that I actually want because we all know about that life. Bare Minerals, a company who has quite a few complexion products that I really enjoy. I love their blushes. I love their highlighters. I love several of their foundations. You know, they are a fairly safe, straightforward brand. They're not out here making blue eyeshadow. They're not out here making, you know, black lipstick. You know, they're just doing them. And they came out with these, what are these? These are the Gen Nude Bronzer Blushes, which is like this combination infused like blush and bronzer that's supposed to give your face like a sculpted, lifted, colorful effect. I'm like, yes, F me up. Because I love a like sun-kissed, bronzy, you know, sunburnt sort of look. I love that, especially with oranges and yellows and reds to just really give that, that earthy flush to your face. And there's three colors and they all look really, really pretty. But as we all know, or if you didn't know, you know now, the one thing I am not about buying in 2021 are single blushes. I have so much blush. I have so much highlighter. I just don't have it in me to pay $30 for a single blush. I just, I do not have that kind of income to support that sort of spending. They look beautiful. Definitely let me know down below if there's something that's really good. Like I said, I hold Bare Minerals complexion products to, to a pretty high level. I hold them in fairly high esteem. And these just look so pretty. Such an interesting idea because I'm someone I don't like to bronze. You all know this bronzing isn't goth, but I like to contour my face. I like to, you know, emphasize certain structures about this. And so when you have this thing that's like, it's a bronzer blush duo, well, not even a duo, it's like infused together. I'm like, ah, ha, ha, what sweet alchemy is this? Which quite frankly, I could probably get the same effect by swirly, swirly blush, swirly, swirly bronzer. Whew. But the idea of having it in one beautiful, sweet, compact, and such beautiful colors, I was so down. I was like, definitely, if I had unlimited money, that shiz would be in my hot little hands. Okay, something else that I would like to have. I'm kind of undecided. I'm leaning towards not buying them because I just, I just, like I said, I don't have the money to buy just stuff that I want to purchase willy nilly. And this is from, oh, I will leave it here. I've anti hauled the majority of their stuff before just because it's like stuff that I would like. It's frivolous things. It's not anything that's really going to enhance my collection or something that I can get any kind of review out of. And these are these notepad monochromatic palettes. I had a moment when I saw the green one, I was like, oh, you cute. As y'all know, your girl loves green. And they do look really, really cute. I think they are going to be a really nice alternative to people who don't like ColourPop or people who can't get ColourPop. They don't, I'm not entirely sure about how easy it would be to get this company either, but it is a company that is doing these nice, smaller, color themed monochromatic palettes. They had a green, I'm pretty sure they had a purple, they had a pink, they had a blue, they had some more neutrally ones, but I saw those and I was like, those are cute. Those are nice little concise curated color stories. And I love, love that green one. And if I had, like if I was just, you know, out here up in dollar, dollar, dollar going on it, yeah, sure, I would have bought it, but I've got other things that I have. They look really, they're cute little notebooks and they're like color cur cur curated. It's something that speaks to me on my artistic level. I can get down with this sort of color theory, this sort of formatting it. You know, I love, I love, I love, I love smaller monochromatic palettes. Y'all like say it ain't so. And so seeing these, I was like, oh, those are cute. I don't even know how much they are. I just saw them, uh, uh, screenshotted it on trend mood. And I was like, that's something that's really nice that I'm not going to buy. And on that note, that is the end of this particular anti haul. They will continue to be coming. I'm creating content as I want, when I like, how I want, because I really need to get back into the whole idea of doing what brings me joy and happiness and not feeling like I have, uh, 
to do a video for YouTube. I want to be excited for the content I bring to you and not pay as much attention to people who kind of like, I've said this a million times before, I'm just trying to be me, authentic me, doing what I like and what I love, and hopefully some of y'all enjoy it as well. I would love to know what y'all had to uh, had to say, what, what y'all think about the shows that I talked about. Do you love it? Is it amazing? Are you gonna buy it? I need y'all to go out and buy a blush or a highlighter or a monochromatic eyeshadow palette in my honor so I can vicariously live through you with monochromatic palettes and all that shiz. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love you, and as always, keep it real. Mwah!